In our Health Watch report, Local 3's Connie Fellman tells us what the future of aging has in store for us. Bob Hope did it, George Burns too, and Betty White was right on the brink when she passed away. It's not so unusual anymore to live to be 100. Scientists are actually predicting that children born today will on average live to be more than 120 years old. So what does the future of aging have in store for us? When 100-year-old Olive Ollie Fowler was born, Warren G. Harding was U.S. president. Milk was 33 cents. She says it was a much simpler life. We walked and rode bikes and uh, nobody had cars because nobody had any money. Ollie met Sid, her husband of 70 years, when they were teens on the ice in Canada. Today, Ollie is part of a growing number of centenarians. So why now? What is the future of aging? Epidemiologist Andrea LaCroix is making it her mission to find out. Your chronological age is a certain number. Whereas our biological age is a measure of how fast we're aging. Professor LaCroix believes epigenetics is key. Exposures in the environment and everyday stressors can impact your genes, causing some people to live longer than others. I think there probably are ways to slow down um, epigenetic age acceleration. Another area of research? Identifying cells that impact metabolism and inflammation. Scientists are exploring whether interventions such as caloric restriction, fasting, exercise, and certain drugs turn back time on those cells and extend life. We're on our way to finding um, a biomarker of biological aging that can be measured in the blood and that can help us understand um, where we are with respect to our aging process. Um, over and above our chronological age. Researchers also want to know how microbiomes living in our bodies impact longevity. There may be one day supplements or things that we can take that help us to age slower. Until then, Ali says she'll stick with what she knows works, surrounding herself with family and lots of love. You have to kiss each other goodnight every night. Ali says longevity runs in her family. Her father lived to be 98, and her mother was 91. She lost Sid 10 years ago. He died at age 91, at home, in his bed. Ali says she drove herself around until about five years ago, giving up her car keys at 96. And her last trip was just a few months ago. She says she missed her grandchildren, so she flew to Canada to visit everyone. And that's your Health Watch. I'm Connie Fellman, Local 3 News.